I'd like you to take out some paper and I would like you to follow along with me as I introduce you to some additional angle relationships. What's this a picture of? What vocabulary word is represented here? A transversal. And what is a transversal? It's a line that cuts across two other lines. How many transversals do we have here? One. We have two intersections, right? Okay, so let's focus first on that intersection. What do I know? That there are vertical angles here and here and here and here, right? What else do I know? Let's give these angles numbers, okay? I'm going to call this angle one, two, three, and four. What do I know? Yeah. Which ones? Just name one. Okay. Four and three are a linear pair, which means the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four is equal to 180 degrees, right? Yeah. Cool. What others? Okay. Somebody else. Give me another pair. Yeah. Three and two. I think there's one more there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know that all of those equal 180 degrees. And what else do we know? What do we know about the measures of the vertical angles? Yeah. They are, yeah. So which ones are vertical angles? One and three? No, those are, those are vertical. Right, those are vertical angles. So that they are vertical angles. Yeah. What's the other pair? Three and four. Uh-huh. And that means that those angles are congruent. Angle one is congruent to angle three, and angle two is congruent to angle four. And at this intersection, the same exact thing is going on, right? Let's give these guys numbers to five, six, seven, and eight, okay? And we know that five and seven are a vertical pair, and six and eight are a vertical pair, and eight and seven are a linear pair, right? All of those things we know. Now, if you think of this as sort of like a nuclear family, like uh, mom, dad, brother, sister, and you think of this as that, these two guys are cousins, right? The two different families, there's a relationship between them because they are created by the same transversal crossing two lines. Okay. So they actually have relationships as well. There are, these are the names of the relationships. Let me give them to you first so you can write them down. Corresponding angles, that's one. I have alternate interior angles, that's another. And then same side interior angles. Okay, so let me ask you to use your, your powers of deduction here. Which ones do you think are corresponding angles? Remember, we're talking about relationships between this group here and this group here. Yeah. Seven and three. And what made you think that? That's exactly right. That's what corresponding means, right? They sort of match up that way. Seven and three are both in the same relative position. Okay. What other ones? Yeah. Six and four, you got it. What else? Yeah? One and five. And no, they need they need to be they're related to. So those are all the corresponding angles. Alternate interior angles. Which ones are they? Yeah. Four and eight. And what makes them alternate interior angles? They're on the inside, right? Okay, that's that's our first step, right? The first clue. This part right here, 
That's called the interior. And uh, anybody want to guess what these are called? You can do it. Yeah, exactly. Exterior. So this is the exterior. This is the exterior. Okay. So I got interior angles and exterior angles. These guys are interior angles and these guys are exterior angles. Now, what makes four and eight alternate interior angles? Right. They are on opposite sides of the transversal and they are in the interior. This isn't really as hard as it sounds. Once you stop and you think about it and you think, well, wait, maybe the words actually say what they mean. Yep. Doesn't always happen, but this time it does. Alternate interior angles. They are on the inside. They are on alternate sides like that. Which ones are on the same side? Same side interior angles. Yeah. One and eight and? Four and seven. You guys are good. 